Today on our 2017 Jeep Wrangler, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the SMI Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System, part number SM99251. Now our braking system is going to apply our brakes on our Jeep in proportion when we're flat towing it behind our RV. So this box here is going to be our control box, and it's not going to take up much room in our vehicle, and that's really all we're going to see. Now we do have an on and off switch, and that's all we're gonna have to do when we get ready to flat tow our vehicle. Just switch this on, and there's nothing else to set up. Now on the inside of our RV, you can see when I push on the brake pedal, it's gonna activate the brakes on our Jeep in the same intensity and the same time. Now our G-Force controller box, since it is a proportional braking system, we're gonna need to have this in line with the direction of travel because it's gonna have an inertia sensor in there. It's gonna read the deceleration and apply it to our Jeep. We are able to adjust the sensitivity on our brakes. And if we come to this knob right here, we can loosen it up, which will allow us to slide the knob up or down, applying more or less force depending on what we need. Now our braking system is also going to come with an indicator light, so whenever the brakes are applied in our Jeep, it's going to light up. And I decided to mount it right here so that when we're driving down the road, a rear view camera on our RV will know that it, our brakes are working properly in our Jeep. Now our operating unit, we mounted it underneath our seat here. And we're going to have a couple fittings that are going to go into the side of the unit here. We're going to have a vacuum line along with an air line and a few wires that are going to come out. Now the vacuum pump is inside the unit and it's going to restore the car's vacuum each time it applies the brakes. It's going to result in a more natural braking process and have less risk of damaging any parts. Now our unit also comes with a breakaway switch and it's going to attach to our RV with this tethered cable here and in the event of a catastrophic brake in the tow bar or in a case where the Jeep gets disconnected, if we pull this it's gonna apply the brakes at full force and let the indicator light come on, letting us know that there's a problem and it's been disconnected. Now the way the brakes are gonna be activated and applied is we're gonna have an actuator right here that's gonna be hooked to the brake arm. There's gonna be an airline that's gonna go from our control box to this actuator and it's gonna apply the brakes. Now that we've gone over how everything works, let's show you how we got it installed. First step in our installation is we're going to need to find a spot to mount our operating unit. And I'm actually going to mount this underneath the driver's seat here. So we can pull our seat all the way forward. I'm actually going to be able to just slide this right underneath the seat, just like that. I'm going to run my wires to the outside, close to the threshold here. That way I can route them to wherever they need to go a little bit later. Our next step is going to be finding a location to mount our G-Force controller. And right here on the kick panel on the driver's side seems like it'd be a good location. So we're going to take a couple of the self-tapping screws that are provided in the kit and we can screw it right into the plastic. Now our unit's going to come with an indicator light. Now I'm going to be mounting this to the back of my rear view mirror. That way I can see it from my RV when we're driving down the road. So we're just going to take the backing off of it got some double-sided type tape on the back. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply it directly to the back of my mirror. And then we're going to need to run our wire and I'm going to follow along the factory wiring here and go along the headliner and drop it down to the panel over here. So just going to tuck your wire behind the panel as much as you can. And once you get down to this corner right here, you got a couple different things you can do. I'm gonna to continue to run the wire, tucking it in between the panels until I get to this side panel over here. And then I'm gonna pop this side panel off, making it a little bit easier to route my wires behind the dash. I'm gonna drop my wire down. I'm gonna go ahead and secure it to some of this factory wiring here that we don't have to worry about it banging around or moving on me. With our interior components installed and wired, I'll go ahead and show you where and how we connected them. Our red wire coming from our indicator light, I wired closest to the brake switch on the cold side of the brake switch wire. That's going to be the wire that only gets power when the brake pedal is depressed. Now the black wire, I went ahead and got my buck connectors and I connected the black wire coming off my indicator light, the black wire coming off my G-Force controller, and the black wire coming off 
my control unit itself and connected all three together. So when I pulled up this panel along the edge here and ran my wires out the side for my control unit. And that's where I ran my black wire running up and then also my red wire for my control unit. I went in and connected it to the red wire on my G-Force controller box. Now, the white, yellow, and green wires coming off the G-Force controller box, I ran out the grommet on the firewall. Now, the grommet's gonna be right down there. It's a little hard to see, but that's where you see those white, yellow, and green wires coming out. I took my yellow and green wires and I tapped into the yellow and green wire for our lighting circuits coming from our RV. And then my white wire, I went ahead and grounded it at the chassis right here. So there's going to be a factory ground point right against the edge. And then I put a butt connector in and I ran it down to the ground that's on my four pole wiring that I also had for my lights. So here's where our wire dropped down. It attached to the ground right here at the frame and then it goes up front to the connector. This is also where the green and yellow wire are coming from. And that's, that's what I mean by the lighting circuits or lighting wiring for our vehicle. Next, we're gonna need to find a spot to mount our breakaway switch. Now, they do provide us with a nut, bolt, and washer so that we can get everything in place, but I don't wanna drill into my bumper. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna take a self-tapping screw and going through my breakaway switch, I'm gonna apply the screw right into the bottom of my base plate here, just off to the side of my electrical connector. Our blue wire is gonna end up going to our operating unit with the blue wire coming off of there. Now our black and orange wire is gonna to go to a 12 volt power source with our fuse holder attached. And then it's also gonna to connect to the brown wire coming off of our operating unit. My blue and brown wires I ran across the threshold here and then went up to the grommet that I used earlier and went into the firewall. Now my brown wire here, I hooked up to my orange and black wire, but then where it came out at the firewall, I took one of the extra black wires in our kit and I connected it to the other end of my brown wire and then I ran it across the firewall, zip tying it along the way, and I ran it over to my battery where I hooked a buck connector in so I could put my fuse holder in place and then attach it to the positive post of my battery. Now for right now, I'm gonna leave the fuse out of the fuse holder. Now my blue wire, I didn't have enough, so I took the excess green wire that I cut off from earlier and I ran it down towards my blue wire. I went around my washer fluid bottle and I met up with my blue wire. And this wire, this end of the blue wire is coming from the breakaway switch. With all of our wiring done, I'm gonna go ahead and take some zip ties, a little bit of electrical tape, and the wire loom that they provide in our kit, and I'm gonna tidy everything up, and make sure it's not gonna be rubbing against anything or against anything hot. Now we can get ready to work on our vacuum line connections. We're gonna to wanna to find the vacuum line that's directly connected to the brake booster, and that's gonna be right here next to our brake reservoir. Now one thing I do wanna mention, when you go to cut your vacuum lines, you don't want to use a pair of side cutters. You want a clean, flush cut. You want it to be straight as possible. So you're going to want to use an airline cutter or some kind of tubing cutter so you can get a nice straight cut. Now we're going to have to put in a check valve along with the T. So our T is going to reconnect our airline vacuum line back together, but then the third part where it's gonna go back into the cabin area and it's gonna to connect to our operating unit. So you're gonna to wanna to try to get a cut in a straight area as possible so you don't have to deal with the bends. So I'm gonna come right past this curve and cut it right here. So I'm gonna take my T, I'm gonna insert it into my hose. And if you're having a little bit of trouble, you can take a little bit of soap or a little bit of silicone spray and you can apply it to the T so it'll slide onto the hose just a little bit easier. Now that our T's in place, we're gonna come down the hose. We'll put our check valve right about here. So we can go ahead and take our cutter Make sure you got enough room 
between your fittings here that you're not going to interfere. I'm going to go ahead and cut the hose. Now when you're putting your check valve in, you want to make sure that the black section of the check valve is going away from the brake booster and it's going towards the engine. You're going to want this green, yellowish color going towards the brake booster. Just so it's easier for you to see, and we haven't actually bolted our operating unit down, I went ahead and pulled it out slightly. I wanted to show you where we're going to be making the connection with our vacuum hose. This is where we're going to be plugging it in. So we'll go ahead and take our vacuum hose, and we can push it onto the bar fitting. Now once we have it connected, we're going to have to run this vacuum line out, out to the T that's in the engine compartment. So we're going to route our vacuum line across the threshold here underneath the factory wiring here, and we're going to route our vacuum line through the same grommet that we've been going through. I'm going to go ahead and route our vacuum line and estimate about how much we need and give it a little bit extra. I'm going to go ahead and cut our tube, cut the excess off. And then we can attach our vacuum line to our T. Our next step is going to be mounting our actuator. Now this part of our actuator right here, if we loosen up the nuts, this is going to clamp around our brake pedal arm here. And the tethered piece right here is going to be drilling into the firewall with the provided self-tapping screw. Now, you want your cylinder and your actuator to be high enough that it's out of the way of the pedal, but low enough so that it still has enough torque and enough pressure to actually move the brake pedal. Now, what I like to do is I like to mount my actuator, and then I can take my cable and anchor end, and you're gonna wanna cut away all the carpet and any insulation. You're gonna wanna go directly into the metal on the firewall with your anchor point. So I'm gonna go get this in and get it adjusted, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. Now that we have our actuator installed, you'll see that the grounding anchor is going directly into the metal, and I just cut that carpet around it. And the cable is pretty straight. It's as level as I can get it. And now they do say that you can have up to an inch of difference between where the anchor is and where your actuator is. Another thing I want to mention is once everything's adjusted and tightened down, you want to have just a little bit of slack left in the actuator here. On our actuator, we're going to have an airline fitting here. So I'm going to take my quarter inch airline that's in our kit. You're going to want to push it into that fitting. And you'll feel it lock in. I'll go ahead and give it a good tug to make sure it's locked in. Now we're going to need to route this back to our control unit and it'll go into the fitting inside the box. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with my vacuum line. I'm actually just gonna tuck this underneath, push the seat forward, making it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. So the air fitting going into our control unit is gonna be right next to our vacuum line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit of extra room. I'll go ahead and cut my airline tube and then we can plug it in. Give it a nice little tug to make sure it's not going to come back out. Now with all of our connections made, we can go in and start tidying up all our wires and putting all our panels back. Now that all the panels are back in place, I'm going to take a couple self-tapping screws and I'm going to screw it into the side plate here got a couple holes. I'm just going to go right into the floor. With all our panels back in place and everything tidy up, we can take our 20 amp fuse and we can put it in our fuse holder. Once we have this in place, we can go ahead and test our system. 
make sure everything's working properly. And then I'll finish up our look at the SMI Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System, part number SM99251 on our 2017 Jeep Wrangler.